What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Usually around this time of week I upload the Ask Me Anything series. However, I wanted to change things up a little bit this week, so we're going to be doing another episode of Overpaid or Underpaid. I've done these a couple of times on the channel in the past, most recently right before the season began. It's a pretty simple concept. Basically, you guys just give me names of players and we talk about their contract and go over if I think they're overpaid or underpaid. As always, I want to know your guys' thoughts, so leave all your picks for the players we're going to cover in this video down below in the comments. And if this is your first time checking out the channel and you want more NHL content like this all year long, be sure to hit that subscribe button. We're getting super close to 70,000. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get this started with the first question from Lucas Fox, who says, Tage Thompson is looking like an absolute bargain for the Buffalo Sabres. He's proven to be an elite talent and hopefully a franchise player for them. This is one of those where if we made this video right when he signed his extension with the Buffalo Sabres that pays him about 7.1 mil per season, which doesn't kick in until next year, my answer would be a lot different than it is now. Obviously, Thompson broke out in a big way last season, scoring 38 goals in 78 games, and Buffalo wasted no time locking him up in the summer to a seven-year, $50 million extension. An extension that at the time it was signed was criticized by a lot of people because it was seen as a massive risk due to the fact that Tage Thompson only had one season playing like a player worth that kind of money. Before that breakout season, Tage Thompson wasn't even an above-average NHLer. However, now looking back at at this extension, the Buffalo Sabres look like geniuses because not only has Tage Thompson been able to replicate his production from last season, he has taken his game to another level. Even after last season, I don't think anybody could have seen this coming, Tage Thompson taking another step and developing into one of the absolute best players in the league. Currently, he's top five in points, top five in goals. His extension is looking amazing, so I definitely have to go with underpaid on this one. If he's going to be a player that gives you this kind of production year in and year out, he should be among the highest paid in the league, obviously right? The next comment we have comes from Jelly Jeffrey, who says, Nikolai Ehlers, 6 mil, really talented score, and is currently over a point per game. The only problem is that he isn't healthy, only had two full seasons, 16-17 and 17-18. I'm a huge fan of Nikolai Ehlers. He played his junior hockey here in Halifax for the Mooseheads, was unbelievable for them for two seasons, got the opportunity to watch him live multiple times. Nikolai Ehlers is a guy who I always thought there was an 80-plus point player in there, and he's had seasons in which he most most likely would have finished with 80 plus points, but like you said, he really does struggle to stay healthy, and it's tough to use, you know, the health against him when you're talking about something like this, trying to determine if he's overpaid or underpaid, but based on his performance this season, and even factor in the last two seasons prior to this, I think he is definitely slightly underpaid. Even with all the injury history, I still feel confident in saying that. He just provides so much value to the Winnipeg Jets lineup when he's healthy, and he is right now, which is really nice to see. The next comment we have comes from Matt. Max, who says, Josh Anderson, 5.5 for the next four, I believe, big power forward who can score some goals, but is he worth the deal? Yeah, this is one where I definitely have to say overpaid. Josh Anderson is a really interesting player. He's very streaky and inconsistent. He's a really fun player to watch off the rush, has a unique combination of size and speed, and has a really heavy shot as well. And there's times when Josh Anderson's having a good game and you're watching him and he looks like the most dominant player on the ice, and he looks like a guy who should be scoring 30 goals year in and year out. The problem is you don't get that version of Josh Anderson very often and when he's not scoring goals I mean he's a pretty one-dimensional player in the sense that even just offensively he's really only a shooter doesn't have much playmaking ability whatsoever the next comment we have comes from Senator Sal who says Kuzmenko's extension and was it worthy of the money and term or could it have been longer or paid less slash more I don't think I actually ever gave my thoughts on the Kuzmenko extension in any video since it happened so I'm glad you asked this I have absolutely no problem with the money or the term. I actually think it's a really fair deal for the Vancouver Canucks. I mean, Kuzmenko has been one of their best offensive players this season. He's already over 20 goals in just 48 games. He's got 43 points. Kuzmenko has not only just proven that he can hang at the NHL level, but be a very productive top six winger. So especially if he continues to produce at this level for the next two seasons, then that's a great contract. My only issue with it is I just don't really get why Vancouver decided to extend Kuzmenko as opposed to trying to cash in on his value like they did with Bo Horvat. Someone putting up the kind of numbers Kuzmenko is this season and having a cap hit of just 950000 you have to think that would have been a pretty insane trade piece, but Rutherford made it clear that he views Kuzmenko as part of the core. He is only 26, so hopefully he's able to maintain this production and success with Vancouver throughout the remainder of his extension, and if he does that, then I would say honestly slightly underpaid. The next comment we have comes from Justin, who says, Jonathan Huberto, and I'm guessing you mean his extension, which kicks
picks in next season and is good for an AEV of 10.5 million. And listen, I know Jonathan Huberto had 115 points last season, 85 of which were assists, which I think is the most assists ever by a left wing in a single season. But man, this year with Calgary, like he hasn't been bad, but he's just been like an average top six winger. And for a guy who pretty much ever since 2018 was one of the best offensive players in the league, that is a massive step backwards. So I got to go with overpaid on this one. I mean, starting next year, he's going to be among the highest paid forwards in the league. And I just don't really see him getting back to the level he was producing at in Florida. The next comment we have comes from Frequency Vibrations, who says Alexander Georgiev 3.4 mil for the next two seasons after this one. I feel like I definitely got to go underpaid on this one. Georgiev definitely having a really underrated season. Not a guy you hear a whole lot about, but through 34 games, he's got 20 wins, rocking a 920 save percentage, and is in the top half of the league in goals saved above expected among starting goaltenders. He's been really good in Colorado, and I was somebody who was skeptical about Colorado's decision to trade for Gorgiev and then give him that kind of extension because his last two seasons in New York really weren't the greatest. The next comment we have comes from My Stickman. I think that's how you say that. Jeff Skinner, I don't know how to feel about his contract anymore. We need you to tell us. So for those who don't know, Jeff Skinner makes $9 million a season and is signed through 2026-27. Even though Jeff Skinner is on pace to set a new career high in points this season, he's already up to 50 in just 46 games. I am going to say he's still overpaid, but just like by like one, maybe two mil. Like if he had a $7 million cap it, I don't think anyone would have a problem with that. Now that being said, this is still a massive turnaround from where everybody was at on Jeff Skinner two seasons ago, where his contract was viewed as one of, if not the worst in the league. This next one comes from Sideline Cinemas, who says, what about Jack Eichel at 10 million? Me personally, I think it's fair because I think he will be a very big piece in Vegas trying to win the cup, but what do you think? So as of right now, I feel like you gotta say he's definitely overpaid. He hasn't played like a $10 million player this season, and that's not saying he hasn't been good because he has been good, but he hasn't been, you know, elite among the best forwards in the league. He was recently called out by Bruce Cassidy. Cassidy saying they need more from him, and I feel like he kind of just did that to try and light a spark under Eichel. This is one of those where, yeah, I'm saying overpaid right now, but the contract as a whole, it's not something I would be worried about or anything because even the way he's playing right now, Jack Eichel's still a good player, but I don't think it's going to be long before we see him get back to being the guy he was from, you know, 2017 to 2020. Moving along to the next one, this one comes from Peter, and it's kind of asking for my prediction here. David Pasternak's extension over under 10.5, and do the Bruins get a discount since they have Marshawn and others on cap friendly deals? Plus, Pasta is horde in the defensive zone, so maybe a discount. Would love to hear your thoughts and really appreciate the kind words. I am absolutely smashing the over on this one. I mean, David Pasternak is fourth in the NHL in points right now. He's already up to 71, one of the most dominant players in the league without a doubt. We saw the kind of money Panarin was able to command as a UFA, whether Pasternak resigns in Boston or signs somewhere else in unrestricted free agency. I would be genuinely surprised if the dollar amount came in at anywhere lower than 11. The next comment we have comes from I Bexel, and it's Josh Norrissey. This is pretty crazy. So Josh Morrissey has a cap of 6.25 million is signed through 2027-28. And it was a contract that just a season and a half ago was looked at as a pretty bad one, honestly. He was getting paid like a top pairing defenseman, was playing those kind of minutes, but certainly wasn't producing like one. And now this season, he's in the Norris conversation. All of a sudden, 53 points in 52 games, had a multi-goal performance last night against the Blues. Just a really crazy and random breakout season. Never in a million years did I think Morrissey would be the kind of defenseman that could, you know, be in that Norris Trophy conversation, but here we are, and 6.25 million for the way he's playing right now, that looks like an absolute steal, so gotta go with underpaid on this one. Moving on now, this next comment comes from Senator Sal, who says, Matt Boldy, is he overpaid or underpaid? Is this a contract that turns really good on a few years? So Boldy's extension kicks in next season, it's a cap of 7 million and is signed through 2029-30, and this is obviously one of those contracts where you're paying them for what you hope they become, not what they've done up until this point, similar to the one Tim Stussler signed with Ottawa, Jack Hughes in New Jersey, and hey, both of those extensions are already looking fantastic, and there's no doubt in my mind that this Boldy extension is going to look like a really good deal for the Wild in the near future. I'm a huge fan of Matthew Boldy. I think this is a guy who, within the next couple of seasons, is going to be somebody who puts up 30-plus goals every year and, you know, is always up there around a point per game, and although the sample 
size isn't ridiculously large. Boldy does have really good underlying numbers, really good two-way metrics, so I think this is going to be a great deal for the Wild. And now for the final comment of this episode, this one comes from Ducko621, who says Jonas Siegenthaler at 3.4 mil per year. Guy has fantastic underlying stats and will chip in a little bit offensively. Devils have a diamond on the blue line with him. I would have to agree with you on that one. I think 3.4 mil per season for a guy like Siegenthaler is fantastic. I think it was a great decision by the Devils to extend him prior to this season because if they would have waited until after this year, they probably would have had to give him a lot more. He's already tied his career high in points this season with 14 in just 49 games. Defensively, he's a monster. Like you said, he has really good underlying numbers. He's a plus 26. He's averaging close to 21 minutes of ice time per game. He's the kind of defenseman that all 32 GMs in the NHL would love to have on their team, especially at that number. So I'm going to say underpaid for Jonas Siegenthaler at 3.4 mil. So that does it for another episode of NHL Overpaid or Underpaid. Like I said at the beginning, I want to know your guys' picks for all the players we talked about in this video. So leave them down below in the comments. If you guys enjoyed and you want to see another video like this, in the near future, then be sure to drop a like. That is the best way to show your support. And lastly, if this was your first time checking out the channel and you want more NHL content just like this all year long, be sure to hit that subscribe button and I will talk to you all soon.